welcome back to our channel. We now have an assembly with two halves of the controller, both with holes and ribs. So we are now ready to add the PCB. I'm going to hide that back part by hovering over and pressing the tab key. And then I'm going to spin around and I'm going to insert a new part by going through assembly. Insert components, new part. Now we have to choose a face or a plane to start the new part. So I'm going to choose the inside face of the area that we cut out for the PCB. So now we are sketching on that face in our new part. So I can go normal too, I can use a center rectangle, I can start the origin, and I can throw out the shape of the PCB. And then for the size, it's going to be a little bit smaller than the cut up that we made. So it's going to be 44 high by 194 wide. So it will be half a millimeter smaller than that cut that we made all the way around. Then just extrude this doing apply next through 1.6. That's the thickness of the port and we want to go upwards. So we are basically filling in that slot area that we cut from the top half of the controller. Then we can rename that new part. I'm going to call it something like controller PCB 2022. And then I can just expand that part and call it something like PCB and then you can save your assembly. And you can save that new part externally. Now we can edit that PCB again and add some more details. So I'm going to click on the part and press edit part. The other parts in the assembly go semi-transparent. And I'm gonna spin it around. And we are going to add some details on the top. So there will be three buttons in the middle. Maybe start, select, and PS button. And then there will be four buttons on each side. Maybe one side are directional and the other side are standard gameplay buttons. Everything's going to be symmetrical, so we only have to throw one half of the buttons. So I'm going to start on the left hand side and start a sketch on this top face. Going to go normal too and get a circle. And I'm going to throw at the center of that large circle that makes up the bottom pad on the top half. And let's set this as 25mm diameter and also make it for construction. So just click on it, press for construction on the left, we'll use this circle to line up our four buttons. So I'm going to get the center rectangle tool, and I'm going to throw a square directly at the top of that circle. This should be 10mm, so you can just dimension one of the edges and then make both of the edges equal. We will use center line to help us sketch the triangle here. It is 12mm length. And then we can use trim entities to remove unneeded lines. Press OK. So it should look something like this. And then we can use a circular pattern to pattern this all the way around. So we've got four of them. To do this, I'm going to select all of the detail. I'm going to drag a box around that entire pentagons. And then I'm going to go to circular pattern. This is on the sketch tab underneath the linear sketch pattern drop down. So by default, the pattern will probably go around the origin. And we don't want this, so you can clear the pattern center in this top box, and then we can choose the center of that small circle that we just drew. Then we want to pattern four times equally round, and it should look something like this. Press OK to add those three extra pentagons. Now if you find that your pentagons aren't fully defined, if you can drag them around, then try and move one of them around, and then pick up the center point in the pattern there. You can see it moving around in the middle of the circle, so get the center point, and just drag it to the center of the circle, and usually that makes your pattern fully defined. Now we can add the buttons in the middle, so I'm going to get another center rectangle, I'm gonna draw a button around here, in left middle area, so it's above the rib, this one's also going to be 10mm length, and 7mm wide. And for the spacing, it's really up to you. I'm going to set mine 25 from the origin horizontally, and then 10 millimeters above. And then we can use a center line from the origin downward. And we can make circle in the middle bottom here. And we all set it 12 millimeter diameter. Then we can just mirror all of this over the other side. So I'm gonna get center line. I'm gonna draw a vertical center line up from the origin. Then I'm going to select the whole sketch tool. And we can mirror except the circle here. And I'm just going to mirror that over to the other side. And because we've got multiple center lines in the sketch, you'll have to select that mirror about point manually. So just select that as that new vertical center line that we just added. So these squares and pentagons are going to be the bottom of the button. And we can extrude all of the squares and pentagon upwards 10 millimeters and press OK. Then we can throw the actual buttons, start a sketch on the top face of those new blocks that we added. 
and then we can use the button patch to make the bottom using feature, sketch, offset entities, and make it reverse. We set just half a millimeter, and also don't forget to checklist the reverse box. We will do the same for the rectangle and circle too. And then we can use trim entities to remove unneeded lines. In the right hand side, we will make circle line for geometry. And set it 25mm and make it for construction, and then press OK. And then we can use a pentagon pattern again. Now with the pattern, you have to have somewhere to pattern around. So before you make the pattern, make sure you add a point in the middle of that large circle. You can then use the circular pattern from the sketch tab. You can choose that point, the center point of the pattern. And you should be able to pattern those three other pentagons around. If it doesn't, you can try getting one of the center points of the new pentagons and making those coincident with that construction circle that we added. And that should fully define those pentagons. And then we can make circles on the middle of pentagons by using construction circle we just made because the shape of the right hand side are in the circle shape and we'll set 10 mm diameter and again we will use circular sketch pattern we can then use this to line up the middle of a circle so select the circle just drag it out just touches the outside of the block there so for these ones we can just throw one we can dimension it and fix in place and you might just need to lock one of them in place so get the center point and just drag it to the center of the circle and usually that makes your pattern fully defined now we've got all of those things, so now we should have 4 pentagons, 5 circles, a rectangle, and a triangle in total. And we can extrude these upwards to make the tops of the buttons. I'm going to select that sketch and press extrude it post space, and I'm going to extrude 3 different sets, because the buttons are at slightly different heights. So we'll make a bit different surface in the PS button, and we can choose front plane, and drag it to the middle of the circle. And we'll set 11mm, because the half of the distance. and just click OK and then we'll make a line in the middle here and in the side here with a different height and we will connecting them by using this line and set them 10 and 9 millimeters and we will use features and just choose revolve post space tool and choose the middle line here to become the axis of revolution and then just press OK and we'll see the shape is more convex and different. And then we'll extrude this to rectangle and triangle with the heights 10 mm. 10 mm seem to be fine there. I'm going to press OK to add those. But if we look from this side, they all just look like too high. So we can change the height to 9.5 mm. Then I'm going to reuse the same sketch. So I'm going to expand that new feature, choose the sketch underneath it, and then do another extruded post space. And then this time in the selected contours, choose the remaining for pentagons and for circles. This time we want to extrude a little bit higher up because these button parts are a little bit higher than the center section. And if you look from the end, see they're not quite sticking out there. So I'm going to increase them slightly. I'm gonna put them up 12 millimeters and press OK. In this time, they are just look like too short for me, and so we'll just add a half millimeters to become 12.5 millimeters heights, and then press OK. And then I'm just going to round off the top of all of those buttons, so I'm going to get fillet, going to make it 0.25 millimeters. I'm gonna choose one edge, and then we should be able to use the edge selection toolbar to get most of the others. And then I can just add these three final ones manually. Then we can exit editing the part. going to click on the part and open it just so we can add some appearances and we can rename all of those features 
so I'm going to call this first one button paste button top middle button top middle logo and this one button top circle and then just press ok then I'm gonna make the PCB itself green see really obviously it's PCB I'm gonna select all of those blocks that were the button piece I'm going to make those maybe a red color I'm going to choose all of the button tops and the fillet and I'm going to make those dark grey and then you can save the part and go back to the assembly and you should be able to see the dark grey buttons sticking out of the top of the controller and we can save our assembly To recap this video, from within the assembly, we inserted a new part directly by going to assembly, insert components, new part, we added it onto that cut area that we made for the PCB, we used a center rectangle and we extruded a board shape, and we threw some pentagons, rectangle, and circles that were the bottom of the buttons, we extruded all of those, and on top of those things, we threw some circles, pentagon, rectangle, and triangle for the top of the buttons, we extruded these in three different features, so we could have three sets of different heights, and then we just rounded off all of the top, and we finished off the PCB by adding some appearances. Obviously, this is a bit simplified from a real life one. In the next video, we'll cut the holes for the buttons and we'll make and add the joysticks. Thank you for watching, hopefully, it can help a little and be useful.